This video is sponsored by Sakura Co. We're excited to announce our spring sale where you'll get 10% off all Elevate apparel, which includes joggers, face masks, t-shirts, long sleeves, and more. 10% off our online training programs, which includes our home bodyweight jump program, the elevation template, which comes with a mobile training app, and more. And 10% off the annual membership for our Patreon. Use the discount code and link below to take advantage of our spring sale. What's up guys, this is Coach Donnie from Elevate Yourself, where we change lives through volleyball, training, and inspirational content. Welcome to my volleyball coach reaction to Haikyuu season four, episode 20. I definitely got a strong sense that Kenma is not only an actual video game gamer, but also a volleyball gamer. And I have an interesting story to tell. This most recent year was my second season. I mean, we had half a season, which was only six weeks for during the pandemic, and then we had finally our full season. So it's my first full official season at Monroe Catholic High School. I'm not familiar with majority of the girls because I've only known them less than a year. So I have to base a lot of my decisions on instincts and first impressions and just hope I have a good read of character. There was one player who came in late during summer training and then we only saw her for a few days at tryouts and her name is Lahana. She was a little bit quiet and standoffish. Sometimes you don't know whether people are being standoffish because they think they're too cool or maybe they're nervous or maybe they're just more introverted. I always try to give people a fair opportunity. We could all tell that she had a lot of volleyball experience but she was a little bit raw in terms of her technique. But one thing that stood out to me was in every playing drill that we had a chance to try to stay on the court to win, she always found ways to try to score points. Everyone else was either just tipping or spiking, but for her, she was placing shots, she was contorting her body, she was doing a variety of things to try to find an edge. And I remember thinking to myself, this girl's a gamer, I think we're gonna need her on our team. Even though she wasn't very vocal on the court, and like I said before, was a little bit more standoffish in the beginning, there's something about her competitive spirit, which I call being a gamer, where she always found ways to manipulate the situation to get an edge and win the point. And she definitely did that through the course of the season, and she was a critical piece to us winning a lot of critical games this year. So Lahana, if you're listening, thanks for being a part of our season this year and just being you, that competitive gamer that we all knew you could be. Ken Ma would be very proud of you. Thanks for explaining all the various grading of passing where an A pass is right on top of the setter, a B pass is on the three meter line, and then a C pass is beyond the three meter line or completely out of system. In the USA, we call that a one, two, or three point pass. So very similar rating system, just different names. This is a very interesting analysis as to why Kenma is so fascinated with Hinata and I didn't understand why but this person Jay Bagas put it perfectly. Kenma usually analyzes the opponent's mechanics and eventually shuts them down but every time Kenma found a way to stop Hinata's mechanics, Hinata eventually overcame that and created another mechanic to challenge Kenma even more. And I think that goes to show the importance of adapting to the situation and being creative. Sometimes your favorite move that works a thousand percent of the time might not work that one time because that one player like Ken Ma is going to figure out a way to stop you. So you have to be willing to be creative with how you score points. So now it finally makes sense why Ken Ma is fascinated with Hinata. If you want early access to my Haikyuu videos at least three days before I post it on YouTube, then sign up for my Patreon linked below. We are currently offering 10% off for our spring sale if you sign up for the annual subscription. Now let's get this Haikyuu party started. Number four, we left off for this hidden captain that we have not seen but looks exactly like Atsumu's brother, Kita Shinsuke. Is it just me or does he, does he look like Atsumu's brother? Ah, I miss what Takeda Sensei said. He's a player we didn't get, to, uh, yeah. We have not seen him, which means Everything is gonna do is gonna be most likely a surprise. I'm just a substitute. Okay, so he's trying to give off that vibe. You might be wondering why is a player saying this and why does he have a smile doing it? I think he's trying to give off a vibe that he's not that big of a threat, even though he probably would be and you want to make your opponent relax a little bit so you can catch him off guard. I'm assuming that's a strategy, otherwise he's a huge wimp. 
I do miss all those new intros and new bonus footage at the end. Leader, okay, this has got to be about Shinsuke. Oh, we got a Shinsuke backstory already? And he's born with gray hair? Why'd you force that spike earlier, I feel like? Wow, yeah, he commands that presence from people. This guy's scared of him or respects him. <laughs> Chills down the spine. Wow, this guy is an enforcer. I wonder if Atsumu is going to listen to him. They're all charged up. That is a very interesting jump float technique there. I gotta learn that baseline there. Ooh, soft block. I assume he's gonna get a dig. Yes, he does. That was a good digging animation. Slow mo to normal speed. Damn, you gotta watch how those arms separate. So when you're running far away from the ball, especially off of a dig, there's not going to be a lot of energy on the ball, which means you have to add energy, which also means you're going to have to make very exaggerated arm and body movements to get the ball to where you want. So that's why he's swinging his arms like that. What's really fascinating about this animation is how those arms break apart. I want you to try this actually for a second. Pretend like you're trying to really pass the ball all the way across the court there and see if you can do it with your arms locked out and tight. Right, it's a little bit restrictive and when you're trying to swing your arms fast for more power you have to be relaxed and so a lot of people will break their platform slightly to get a better angle and then separate it to increase the velocity and not be restricted by holding your hands together so they did this really really well so let's see watching in slow motion how his arms separate and sometimes they cross to get another angle here and rotating beautiful that's hard to draw. That means you have to draw different angles of the torso and lengths of the arm. Synchronize attack! Wow, he gets another dig. So calm. Again. Yeah, when the captain comes in, he does his job. What was the score? Inari 23, Karasuno 15. Uh oh. Mm hmm. Because you got a veteran coming in clutch. Hey, he doesn't have an underline under his jersey number on the back. A presence about him. He never did anything unnecessary and his words were precise. I think that's a quality that we should all strive for. That's something I definitely try to do as I get older. One, just eliminating a lot of filler words such as like, um, uh. That's just a waste of energy and you're just filling other people's minds with unproductive thoughts and sounds. But also trying to reduce what you say as much as possible to communicate the most with the least amount of words. I think that is a lifelong skill we should all be doing. There's a quote I just heard from Stan Efferding, who is a professional bodybuilder or was a professional bodybuilder. I think he said this. It was either him or the person he was talking to on the podcast. He says, a wise man once said nothing. <laughs> Oh, actually, it was either Mark Bell or Encina. One of those three guys. But just think about it for a second. A wise man once said nothing. Now, I know that here we just talked about how Shinsuke doesn't say very much, but I think that's all based on how a wise person doesn't always have to speak. And when they do speak, it's very few words and it's very powerful. Something we should all strive for, even if you're not a captain. Confidence is something that is hard to teach. Yeah, confidence in knowing what you are capable of doing and that you can just do it. EXP, that's a gamer term. Hey, that's like me. I did not get any playing time until the second half of my junior year, my third year of high school. Yeah. 
Oh man, he worked his way up from a practice player. And he's sharpening his claws. That's gotta be Aran. You only get nervous because you're trying to be more powerful than you actually are. So maybe try to treat what you do as a day-to-day -day expectation. Yeah. Sometimes you gotta treat games like practice. It's just like practice. Just go through the motions and do what you usually do. Sah! Oh, is he gonna serve Shinsuke and then Shinsuke is gonna pass the ball easily? Good angle, look at that angle. And the animation here. This is a very well-formed platform. I like to teach people when they first start playing volleyball to cross their fingers and then fold their thumbs together. And then over time, as they get more comfortable, they can do different hand formations, put their top two together, form a fist. But this is kind of like the classic platform. Ideally, you want to keep your thumbs together. It's not absolutely imperative because you could open your palm if you want, but that's going to be more for more advanced players who know what they're doing. But when you're first starting out, keep your thumbs together. So he's definitely got some classical technique and he's not twisting his wrists. His arms are straight. Very common mistake a lot of beginners make is when they try to redirect the ball, instead of angling their shoulders and keeping their platform solid, they try to keep their shoulders level because it's comfortable and then they try to twist. But see what that does to my platform. It deforms it and it creates all these different unwanted angles. So Shinsuke has already got some great technique here. Very calm too, nice movement. Is that a perfect pass? That is something that is hard to find. The people that perform the same as they do in practice. Usually people perform a little worse in practice and there's a few that perform better. <laughs> That's like two Tanakas there. Two people trying to be hardcore. Tanaka and Tora together. Very true. Uh, okay, this guy is just speaking truth all day. Oh. Let's see what was in that bag. Atsumi, make sure you eat and sleep, Kita. This guy's a natural leader. Pickled plums, warm lemon water, and some snacks, maybe some Sakurako snacks, maybe some Tokyo treat snacks in there. This is another sign of a really good leader. Not only does he also communicate corrective behavior, but he also nurtures. It's like having Suga and Daichi in the same person. Am I the only one that thinks that? We'll see if he continues this behavior as a captain over the episode here. Yeah, he is touched. <laughs> Pickled plums. Yes. So he's just a model of what it means to take care of yourself and just take care of your stuff. Take care of your body, take care of the team. Cleaning. Interesting. I think we're back at the backstory, yes. This is what I love about anime is there's actually a lot of family references, specifically with older people and the elderly, grandparents and so on. I think that's something so important that we tend to lose as modern societies. This is actually a very sad reality of modern societies is that the elderly become neglected over time. And this is more a product of capitalism. Lots of great things about capitalism because you can make what you want of yourself. But with that, we lose our connection with 
some of our family ties because so we're so focused on getting ahead in society, becoming really ambitious with our jobs, and we end up neglecting our grandparents, our great grandparents, those that have built a foundation for us to thrive. So I love that Shinsuke has this scene with his grandma and that he's learning and helping with the chores, but more importantly, just being present and spending quality time with her. It's a very touching scene. I love my grandmas. They also helped raise me and taught me a lot of things. And luckily, I still have one of my grandmas alive. Routine. We are only as successful as our routines. Number one, captain. I wonder when he was announced captain. That's what I want to know. He's got borderline Kenma vibes. Oh, he's crying now. Maybe he's touched by the selection. <laughs> I know we got a lot of Rintaro fans. I, I feel like I still don't know him well enough to have a judgment on his character, so I'm not going to say too much about what I think of Rintaro right now. <laughs> that guy's intense. You need, you need players like that, though. So true. I wonder why, like, it's gotta be symbolic that he was selected as number one, like the beginning of everything. <laughs> Everyone's frustrated that he is like a robot. That's like Kenma, right? Oh, he's laughing now. Oh, back to the angle. Just take care of it. I love the attitude, just do it. That's a good angle swing. Let's look at that one. So we're gonna talk about how to hit to the right of the block and also sharper angle. So we got a nice well-formed double block from Karasuno. Actually, I just noticed here Daichi also was wearing number one and he's got the captain line underneath. I forgot that Daichi was number one and now Shinsuke is number one, also team captain. Coincidence? We'll see. So going back to hitting angle. Once I open up and face the setter and as I start to rotate, I see the block forming to my left. Then I can start hitting away from my body. So you see how if this is straight ahead, if I hit straight ahead, I'm gonna go right into Tsuki. So I have to finish away from my body to redirect the ball slightly to the right. And you don't have to hit super far to the right of the block. Angle just means to the right of the block, at least from the outside hitter position. So wherever your arm follows through is where the ball is going to go. Really important to, to remember that. Yeah, one dig at a time, one touch at a time. Hey, even if you're about to lose, carry some momentum into the third set. Put up a fight, because that can discourage a team right back at them. Yeah. No lead is a good lead. What is he sensing from Rintaro? What is this energy? Oh, he okay. He's talking about the 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 aura that Shinsuke is given off. <laughs> Baby talk with the pet. Oh. <laughs> to him, that's catching with his guard down.
So Shinsuke is there to bring stability to the team. That's what your captain should do, is bring stability. I like that they emphasize the aura that he gives off as well, this presence. So he's very observant. Number five. I do not remember number five, man. There's just so many players. Okay, Tanaka with a good pass. Oh, is Suki gonna finally clamp down on Rintaro? Lean. Oh, another shank. Man, Rintaro's just killing them with that late cutback. Well, at least we get to enjoy a third set from this match. <laughs> she cannot handle the anxiety there. Now for my favorite part of the video, we get to try the brand new box for this month from Sakurako. If you're not familiar with Sakurako, it's a monthly subscription service where you get to receive 20 traditional and authentic artisan Japanese snack items, including Japanese teas and one special Japanese tableware with your box each month. Sakurako helps in partnering with local Japanese snack makers to continue to share Japanese culture and traditions that have been passed down for over 100 years. Now let's go ahead and open this bad boy and see what's inside. Wanna first try this mochi looking thing? I love mochi. I think this is mochi, I could be completely wrong. Mm, looks like it so far. I can't read Japanese. So far a lot of things have been strawberry flavored and there's probably red bean inside. Let's see how it tastes. Mmm, it is mochi. I think it might be a plum. Plum filling. Something fruity. That was yummy. I'm gonna eat another one. I got a whole bag of this. Wow, look how many little mochis it comes with. When you order these Sakura boxes, you definitely get your money's worth. It's pretty amazing how many snacks you get per month straight from Japan. Second we're gonna try looks like a Japanese Fig Newton. I wonder if it's filled with the same fruity type filling. I'm actually gonna split this open so you guys can see. It's a similar fruitiness, kind of like a pound cake outside. Almost like a red bean fruity tech taste. I wish I could read Japanese because I don't know what this is, but everything has been really delicious. I'm not joking. These snacks are really good. If you want more of the latest, most exclusive limited edition seasonal flavored Japanese snacks like the Sakura Pepsi, Japanese Sake Kit Kats, and many more, then I recommend trying the Tokyo Treat Box, which is also a monthly subscription service where you get real Japanese, more modern type of snacks every month. I've already been snacking on this one, but look how much more is left. I probably ate about four snacks already. So this will keep you going every month. Great to share with friends and family and for parties too. Use my discount code and link in the description box to get $5 off your first order of Sakurako and Tokyo Treat monthly boxes. And you can enjoy those snacks while watching these Haikyuu reaction videos with me. All right, this, these Fox references, I'm not understanding these Fox references. Maybe that's the mascot for Inari. Okay, remember we talked about that blue owl? It's flying the same, but the background still, that's why it's going slower. I'm gonna finish off half of this one, man. This is yummy. Come after me already. Maybe he's challenging Suki to just do something different, try to block him. Mm. Uh oh. Nishinoya quiet, not good. I forgot this person's name. Is it Kinoshita? I think it's Kinoshita. I think the Daichi lookalike is Inoshita. Correct me with the names if I'm wrong, because when I watch all the episodes second time around, I want to make sure I get their names right. But it's important not to make a distinction between starters and bench players. There's an obvious distinction between who's going to play more and who's going to play less. But as a coach, I never refer to people as bench players or starting players. I usually refer to players as 
who are starting the match, who are on the court or off the court. Because when you start talking in terms of starters and benchers, you create this hierarchy where the starters are more valuable than the bench players. Even though on paper that might be true because the starters are going to be better players, they're going to score more points and help you win more games, the best teams create as much value for those who are off the court just as much as those who are on the court. So you want to make sure you develop a culture where everyone feels like they can contribute to the success. Here we have Kinoshita who feels comfortable enough to be able to give some feedback to Nishinoya, who's the best passer, and Kinoshita is not even a passer, he's a serving specialist. So if you're a coach of a team, it's important to create a culture and an atmosphere where everyone feels like they can contribute to the collective good of the team. They're just gonna do it in different ways. Some people are gonna do it on the court, some off the court, and some during practice. And as we saw from Shinsuke, some people are gonna do it in the locker room leave snacks and clean the toilets for the team. Everyone is an equal contributor, just in different ways, and you have to make people feel appreciated so they feel like they can contribute in small ways like this, where they're encouraging Nishinoya. Yeah, Nishinoya is non-stop practice. And the fact that Nishinoya can receive that feedback humbly is good too. Ooh, Asai is giving him. Is he talking or speaking in his mind? <laughs> I love his honesty. Ooh, let's talk about that. He's telling Nishinoya, even if you don't get a perfect pass, I will take care of it. Just get the ball up, no matter where it is, they're gonna set me and I'm gonna bail us out, don't worry. That's another great way to show support for your team. Not just giving them some positive words, but just telling them, you might be having an off day, you might be struggling, but that's okay. I'm gonna make up for that. That's what you wanna do. Well spoken, man bun. And everyone's inspired by that. Ooh, we got Nishinoya smiling again. <laughs> and Kageyama just saying, hey, I'm cool. <laughs> oh, Hinata always finds a way to, to get under Kageyama's skin to, to hug, humble him. Ooh, he's calling him out. Oh, that's right. He missed the back wall last time. Yeah, I'm getting... What did he say here? I'm getting pretty sick of jump floaters too. <laughs> Man, this is great. This is what you want, is to have a coach on the court. It's special when, when people feel comfortable enough for you as a teammate to give them feedback. I wonder if this is to 25 points or 15. I remember there's some format differences between US. Ha, I got it. I got the timing on that one. Oh, we're back to the good animation here. Oh, come on, Nishinoya. Is it gonna curve back in? Oh, man. What's great about this scene is that Atsumu just let his guard down, let down his pride, and just listened to Shinsuke. Man, that's why Shinsuke is the captain, man. He knows how to talk to people and get people to do the best thing possible. And I've definitely been in Nishinoya's shoes where the ball's actually off the court and then a good float will just come back in. But just another reason why jump serving isn't always the most effective tactic. Sometimes a good jump floater is just as effective. Man, opening up the third set with an ace. That is a huge, huge demoralizer. Speaking of which, these mochis are staring at me. Man, I'm telling you, man, you gotta snack on these as you're watching Haikyuu. Spike 
Mm. And mochi is very chewy. Yeah, Shisuke knows everyone's personality. It's a very complex analysis. Shinsuke should be a coach. Oh no. Oh, Nishino is gonna get it. Hey, it's high enough. Yeah, when you're nervous or you're low in confidence, you become hesitant. Now, that's the first time that Nishinoi is feeling that. And told he's gonna bail him out. Hell yeah. That's when I would go right to Nishinoi and say, See, I got your back. Just get the ball off the floor. You're okay. Everyone's so used to Nishinoya backing up the team. Now the team needs to back up Nishinoya. <laughs> Alright, education time. Rotations are very difficult. If you don't understand rotations, it's okay. It's going to take you a couple years to really get it. And the reason why they shift people is because it allows them to play their role more effectively. Alright, this is what we call rotation one the way to understand where the uh, what rotation you're in is where the setter is so the setter is in area or zone one so that's right back and usually it goes from setter to middle in zone two and then Aran and then I forgot I forgot Asuma's brother but that's the opposite hitter and then Rintaro is in the middle he's opposite of the middle in the back and then right front I forgot his name Yeah, so Asumu just happens to be the strongest server, I think. You usually want to start off with the strongest server so you have more an advantage, put the team out of system more. Yeah, that's that's a great way to point out. Sometimes some teams just say you got to beat us at our best. And then Kasuno is going to do more manipulation to try to get an advantage. <laughs> I like how Hinata has the double machine guns. Yeah, the Karasuno players are more specialized. Probably because they're not as experienced. Yeah, he's got the shield. These are really great analogies. Ah, so he's saying start with your best passing rotation. Oh, he missed the whole point. Starting with the same rotation. Let's see what she says. Ah, she's getting it very perceptive. Matchups. You want your strongest hitters against their weakest blockers. Are they still trying to serve Aran short? Finally, Itsuki gets a soft block. But it's not against Rintaro, though. Oh, they want Tsuki matched up against Asuma's brother, or the opposite. See what Tsuki matches up against. Okay, so Asamu. So he's gonna try to. Yeah, that's what I would do. Try to get Tsuki matched up against their two most lethal quick hitters. What is he counting? I'm counting on you, weirdo quick killer. Okay. I don't know what the translation is in Japanese, but I like that it called him a weirdo quick killer. Sometimes when the team is very tense, this is a great strategy to instill confidence, but also to distract your team in a good way. So you want to make Tsuki feel like he can own the other team. Say, I am assigning you 
to be the weirdo quick killer because that's what your specialty is. For me, I like to call some of my hitters an assassin. I'm just like, you're an assassin. Go snipe that libero or go snipe that right back and, and get a point. You want people to feel like they're greater than themselves in that moment. Because when you're nervous, sometimes your, your world gets smaller and smaller. But when you can pretend to be a character or pretend to play a role, then all of a sudden you could perform things that you normally wouldn't. So role playing is really important. And one way to do that is to call people names or to give analogies for what they should be doing. The weirdo quick killer. Let's see if he's got nicknames for other people. Ooh, did they try? I don't know. They tried to switch Tanaka and Hinata. <laughs> oh, Hinata trying to trying to outsmart people just gets outsmarted himself. I can see why you guys like Suki's snarkiness. He's sharp. Oh, the joust? Oh, fake. Who knew that Osamu could set? Is he gonna smash it now or is Nishinoi gonna come in to save the day? Because Nishinoi's defense is pretty good. Oh, Kageyama zooming in. Whoa, he comes in for the solo block. Wow, the spread block. Did he just spread block? Let's watch this all the way through to see if they do a replay. Because solo blocking a Ron is rare. I love that zooming in. Okay, so he is spread blocking just a little bit. Usually you don't want to have your arms this far wide. You want to have just enough for a ball's width. But when you're solo blocking, there's so much court to cover that you have to make big moves, otherwise the hitter's just gonna smash it back down, especially at this level when you have big hitters. So what Kageyama is probably doing, he's going up and then he's reading Aran's hand and then slowly spreads further to try to take away some of those low angles. Now he is giving up the seam in between the hands, but most hitters are gonna try to hit around blockers, not through them. So this was a great blocking move by Kageyama. Yeah, that left hand move there. I can't tell whether Suki was impressed or annoyed. You can never tell with Suki, huh? Ooh, Karasuno up by one. These big blockers. Where is Aone? Is he in this? I don't see Aone. He's got to be in that conversation. Maybe because they didn't qualify for nationals. Mm -hmm. Ah, if they, did they match up Kageyama and Suki to be with? Actually, I think they've always been doing that with Kantaro. Ah, got too into it, lost track of time. Here are my immediate thoughts to episode 20. I love how we're diving deeper into the game strategy. It's been a while since we've had some of those educational diagrams. I think it's really great that Q doesn't underestimate the audience's ability to understand volleyball on a deeper level. I'm curious what Karasuno's gonna do to eventually try to stop Rintaro. My guess is that they have to fake one way and then drop the hand for the cutback. Either that, the right back might have to just stand wider to try to dig the ball back into the court. They keep getting faked out by that quick cutback, which is very similar to Soleil's attack from the Argentinian men's national team that I talked about in the last episode. Now, Karasuno might not win this one. I'm always rooting for them, but now that we have Shinsuke in the picture, he's sneaky good. I'm pretty sure he's gonna stay in the third set and he's gonna motivate his team to make the right moves. It seems like Karasuno's confidence is down but sometimes story writers might do that to create more drama so that when they do come back, that difference is gonna feel even bigger. So if I had to make a realistic prediction, I think Karasuno might win this one only because that would create the most drama in the storyline. But Karasuno hasn't lost in a while. They've seen to have been going on this huge winning streak, so 
that's bound to end pretty soon. Don't forget to sign up for your monthly subscription of Sakurito, where this month's box is Sakurito themed and contain many Sakurito flavored snacks. You can also try your Tokyo treat box for some of the latest coolest snacks in Japan. If you miss any of my previous Haikyuu reaction videos, you can watch all of them on this playlist right here. And I know you're gonna like this video right here.